G'day, my name's Amanda Ruck and uh, I'm here to share with you some of my painting techniques and give you half an hour of my day. Um, I would have it uh, every day um, if I could, but uh, while I was in the lockdown period, um, the terrific Nellam Shire decided to put together a program called Art in the Time of COVID, which I applied for and was approved. And so now here's uh, a little uh, insight into my painting techniques. I'm really interested in uh, old growth forests and um, us retaining them. So uh, I find that incredibly important. In fact, there was a, a great event here um, called the Yarra Valley Writers Festival and David Lindenmeyer spoke about old growth forests and I became very much more connected and much more aware of how important they are. Um, you can look him up and look up all that experience. Um, but while I was walking in the beautiful Mount Nash, I um, wanted to replicate that kind of flashing light effect that you have when you're walking through a forest. And, um, and I came up with some techniques that I hope convey that message. So I'm just going to go straight into it. I'm just going to start with a little piece here. This is one I've finished. And as you can see, it's got... Uh, some sort of sideways angles or tilts and some long standing high hopefully forest like feels there with a bit of light coming through so I'm just going to show you how I began this work put this aside you know um, painting is all about trial and error I think there aren't any literal mistakes there's just things that you decide not to keep um, but every mark is about um, learning, uh, and that's why I love painting. Um, well, I love art in general, um, but painting in particular, I just really connect with that two-dimensional surface. Um, so, drip technique. I've got the ground covered, obviously. Quite a lot of water it takes. A bit out of shot there, sorry focus and then we begin so it's really about pooling water at the top of the or pigment at the top of the painting and just letting it slide down um, I use a lot of water so that you get this lovely watery kind of feel to the um, to the work and I'm just using a Payne's grey here one of my all-time favorite colors um, I have been known for cloud painting up until recently I just had to do a lot of walking while I was in lockdown because it's good for you see how these are becoming kind of like um, the trunks of trees now I'm going to do something really fun and I like to call this kind of like a so this is a sort of linear pushing kind of uh, pushing the pigment so that it drips down you can see that pushing the pigment off the brush and then it drips down so you get stronger feels here but um, if I just come back with just a wet brush I'm going to uh, develop a, a kind of tilting technique where you get this lovely shadowy effect at the base of um, the the tree trunks or, or branches so it's almost like a branch like like effect so just coming in with some just water oh, I've got a little bit of paint sorry I've got a little bit of paint on on the end of my brush but mostly it's just water and I might actually change to a, a, a smaller um, size brush now so I get slightly different technique here but this sort of washy sort of feel is that lovely well hopefully that lovely shadowy kind of feel that you get uh, when you're walking through the forest or even driving through the forest um, and the light sort of fragments between the branches and the trunks and um, if any of you are familiar with um, old growth forests or mountain ash um, any eucalyptus that's been you know on the planet for about a hundred years um, hopefully you'll get this sort of feel um, I've had a lot of 
great positive response to this uh, type of painting in the last couple of months and so I thought I'd investigate it a lot more. So um, we'll continue. So really I'm kind of working upside down. Um, see how, oh, I'll, I'll show you when I turn the work the other way around, but I, I can tell I'm getting this lovely shadowy light through here and, um, and it's quite pale um, and I might keep that. Uh, the previous work that I did, I actually worked into it a huge amount and ended up with quite a dense um, uh, painting. I showed you before where is she yeah so you can see that I didn't leave a lot of um, shadowiness along here but I think I might leave it in this painting but I've I've got some light coming falling through here and falling through the forest here yeah um, and I really like working with color um, I think that's kind of clear in my work And filming this today is a great opportunity to help me articulate what I have so privately and silently experienced. Um, so it's kind of like a, almost like a transitionary um, sort of post-lockdown feel, I guess. Um, yeah, or a post-lockdown experience where we're all kind of stretching our legs and widening our arms and, and going back out into the world. Um, which is actually a very different place now. Um, so I like keeping connected to the forest. In fact, a woman who bought one of these pieces recently um, told me about forest bathing. Uh, they do it in Japan. There's a Japanese word for forest bathing. So you go out into a forest and you, you stand or sit um, and become very, very still. And I asked her, was it a little bit like meditating? And she said, yes, exactly. Um, and you start to hear the sounds of the forest and feel the forest around you. Um, and I've been doing that for the last couple of months. You know, it, it, sometimes it doesn't work because I have such a busy brain, but other times it works brilliantly and I come away feeling very calm, very healed. Um, I have to say, I'm sure that the forest gets sick of all my chit chatter and pouring and dumping all my things on it, but um, I'm enormously grateful that it's there and lucky that I live in Healesville. Um, but also in Nillibig, you know, Eltham, Warrandyte, the forests around there are incredibly important too. We need to look after them. Even though we're in the thick of it, uh, we need to look after these old growth forests. They actually burn nowhere near as hot as new growth forests but you can google david lindemeyer about that he's um the authority on this and he's an amazingly compassionate uh very smart scientist so it's not fake news so we're just going to continue with this beautiful kind of uh softening of the shadows here with these pushing and tilt techniques. Pushing and pulling paint around. This is a really nice way to become reconnected to the abstraction that can happen in some works too. Um, it's always good to let go in life in general. Letting go makes a difference to your busy brain. And uh, I'm lucky enough to experience something called flow when I paint. Um, flow is, uh, apparently gardeners get it too. So flow is a little bit um, like a meditative state where you tend to lose track of time and everything kind of comes in and goes out in a almost like a um, qigong kind of um, feel, but you're totally focused on the task at hand. It sort of sounds counterintuitive, but um, I can work for hours in the studio and just forget time. Time forgets me, I forget time. I'm lucky enough to have a beautiful husband that brings me uh, 
some lubricant of um, depending on what type of day time of day it is um, he uh, provides different varieties and so I'll just bring this closer to you you can really see what I've done here it's that lovely really shadowy effect almost like on a on a tree trunk um, and if I tilt it back up this way I'm really about to I sort of mentioned uh, earlier that I was going to turn this around now um, and what we have is the base of the trunks here um, it'll become clear I'll, I assure you so I'm just going to work on this for a little bit longer push some paint around and get that lovely shadowiness starting to kind of pick and choose my um, what I would decide are the trunks of the trees so um, this is sort of uh, creating form within the work um, and I guess a recognizable form to actually I might have the work up this way I'm, we'll see see at the end of it and I like to use I mean these colors are beautiful this sort of beautiful Payne's gray is is a really fantastic color um, as I mentioned one of my favorites but I am now going to introduce some Prussian blue which is a huge favorite of mine um, and uh, very interesting about the history of colours too, um, how they were made, how they were developed. I believe Prussian blue was incredibly popular for hundreds of years. Um, uh, really difficult to make, um, but featured heavily in a lot of religious work. Um, and I think a derivative of that is when um, the Madonna was painted in her blue clothes in Europe on the continent. Okay, so now we're going in with something a little heavier and you get this lovely fuzzing because the canvas is wet. And I like that. So we're doing this tilt to get these branches on the go and the fuzziness is helping us kind of transcend that focus that happens, you know, when you're walking through a forest and it's almost like the the wind is moving through the leaves, moving through the trees, and everything kind of shifts and changes. But if the breeze is really light, it's a really delicate kind of shift. Um, I just feel very emotional when I think about those things. <laughs> so we can see we're really bleeding this colour out here. And I'm going to come back with some more water. This is just straight water from the brush but, you know, has this gorgeous experience. Just do a little bit more there. We're really kind of creating a bit of shadow now through that paint. And uh, I like these little paintings. They're like little studies, I feel. Yeah, that's working really nicely. Oh, and you can see I'm using two brushes there. It's just a way of, uh, I don't know, sometimes I just do things intuitively. It's a way of getting, you know, same double the amount of paint. You sort of, I suppose, work faster maybe. Now I'm going to go in with a big brush and kind of really shake things up now. And uh, let's just get these uprights back in. I want to get some kind of proper tree trunks, if you will. Uh, I'll probably 
develop this top corner as the lightest corner, so light coming through here. Um, so what I might do is get a little bit of a, a ground going on. And uh, here I'm really choosing the tree trunk. So I'm putting... This is uh, the light in the forest. But there is a sort of broad period of drying that needs to happen with this kind of technique. Um, and I've got a larger piece I'll pull up now and uh, we can work into it a bit more. Um, but hopefully you get a, a sense of what this kind of work can can conjure, can bring up um, a little bit magical, uh, sort of enchanted bush forest, that kind of feel. So I'll just pop this, um, this aside for the moment. So that's kind of where I am at with this larger piece, which is dried and it's much easier to work into. need to maneuver this down a little bit otherwise I'll never reach it, Pop it up. so a big piece I'll just drop it down so the lights a bit better there we go fantastic so a larger piece but still very similar in my engagements to what's what's going on I'm thinking this is really quite dark here and I might keep this as the base of the trees and then going up into a really light area so I might actually knock in some um, quite dark moments possibly using some um, Prussian blue or Payne's grey what a surprise so I just need to choose my trunks. Um, maybe I'll keep them white. So, that's the start of a, of a guy. Here's a, another start of a guy. So I'm kind of working in conjunction with the marks that I made from dripping the paint and I'm allowing that to provide the form of this forest that I'm building on a two-dimensional plane. So. Coming in with a little bit more Payne's Grey now. So that was Prussian Blue that I worked with then. Now we're going with the, the Payne's Grey which has just got this such beautiful depth if you can see that. So a kind of darkness coming through there. We'll do another one here, another one there. Fantastic. Come all the way up in there. So that, that's the lovely thing about using washers is that you get this, um, you can get a real translucency going on to this work. And so you, you get a whole lot of things, a whole lot of depth happening. Um, you can see the work underneath it. Um, and you can play around with that, what you want to keep, sorry, what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep. Um, just going to make a, a slight dark, oh, the light's going a bit crazy there. The, yeah, make a little dark kind of rhythm across here. See where I started there? I'm going to come down and sort of follow this beautiful um, shuddering light, or what I like to call shuddering light. Now I'm using a blend of... Payne's Grey and uh, Prussian Blue and I'll just knock in a bit of drip activity and then come down sort of reinforcing that the shutter if you will maybe start a bit, a bit more up here and then go right to the edge and I do paint the edges of my canvases I think that's very important because they're a, a part of the work too like they're not just, you know, they're they're, they're often overlooked, and I I'm, I I dislike that. 
I think it's a part of the piece. Anyway, we'll soften this a bit. All right, that's looking good. I've left quite some really nice open spaces here. And what I will do is come in with this really beautiful uh, colour. It's called um, Whispering... Oh, Whisper Pink. I think you meant to use it as a ground, but I've been using it as a... Um, to, to create that very cold, brrr, kind of foresty feel. So, it'll probably mix with... Um, a bit of the blue but you know even just knocking a little bit of it in you I begin to create some kind of depth there hopefully I might even go back with a, a real pastel pink that I was working on before so mountain ash is often really really pale um, silvery white it actually kind of for me it really ignites it really glows can be really dark around the base depending on where the shadows are and what the tree is doing and if it's still functioning if it's not church dooring yet um, which is you know that's another reason why we need to keep um, old growth forests is that when they start to church door and they start to die um, they provide a habitat for hundreds and thousands of insects and it's incredibly important for that particular environment and who are we to say that um and who are we to take that environment away i mean really people so knocking in a little bit of this beautiful whisper what's it called whisper pink <laughs> i love that so romantic And, uh, you know, there is this kind of feel with this work is that, um, you know, the trees are there, the light is there, but the light is the tree, the tree is the light. Hopefully I'm getting that across, maybe. With these beautiful diagonal pieces. I'll tell you what, I might just take the, um, I'm just going to take the phone off my little setup here and I'll just I'll just move it a little bit closer to um, where you can um, really see the the work so you've got beautiful range of colors I used a little bit of um, gold in there as well which developed that really nice green against the pink so um, hopefully you're starting to see this sort of mountain ash forest appear I might actually knock some of this blue back a little bit. Um, this is lovely, isn't it? That that top bit. Anyway, back to work. Pop you there. Uh, hopefully that. Yep, yeah, that's better. Um, so with this pink, I'm really just what I'm doing is is trying to define the trunks, but also knocking in some light, so that when it's dry. I can work on it a little bit more and really define the areas that I want to um, pop and the areas that I want to recede. And good thing to note is cool areas will recede, warm areas will pop. But because, I mean, people are saying, well, people might say you're using a pink there, but it's actually a really cool pink. So it tends to really drop away. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, so this is the lovely pink coming through next to the green. Oh, how good is pink and green? It's so foresty. I might actually end up using a much brighter pink up here where the light is really free and the canopy begins again up here further up. So this is probably only a third of the way up a a mountain ash tree or maybe even half of that um, might actually knock a bit of this back to mix it with a bit of blue see how the lights becoming the trunk and the trunks becoming the light 
I know, crazy. Crazy but true. So, that gives you a little, little understanding of that part of the story. Now I'm going to come in with some violet. Violet, you might say. What is she, crazy? But it actually really works with that green and that sap green. Um, and don't worry, I'm going to show you a piece that I actually finished um, when I was using this technique. And um, that piece is actually going to the woman who told me about tree bathing. All right, I'll just get... Never want to waste paint. I always try and get it off my um, paintbrush. Being an artist is all about economy. Because we often don't have a red scent to rub together. Okay, this is going to be fun. Coming in with... Um, Australian Violet. Doesn't the name just want to make you get the top off the bloody thing? Oh, Dares! Could you see if you could get the top off this paint? My hand seized up. See, you've got to have a Dares on your side. Oh, he loosened it though. Mm -mm. Got it. He got it. <laughs> Woo! Thanks, Des. All right. So a slightly thick brush. This is the. That's the guy I'm going to use. Such a beautiful colour. Oh, look at that. Don't you want to lipstick that colour? So beautiful. So overwhelmingly beautiful. And uh, when you see this, um, the finished piece, you'll really get a, an idea of, of um, why that colour works so well. A little bit hard to put into words, but And, you know, you don't want to mask all the good work that you've done, but you want to add some, some of this business. This sort of really makes me feel like it's at the end of, at the, end of the day when um, the sun's going down and there's a trick of light and shadow. Possibly one of my favourite times of the day, uh, known as the magic hour. That time of day, my mum was a flight attendant and she used to fly from Canberra, uh, from Melbourne to Sydney at sunset and she used to wear a gold lame dress. They'd all get dressed and they'd serve what she called champagne. It's obviously just sparkling wine, but um, she loved it. I actually did an exhibition about that. Anyway, favourite time of day is that time of day, that crepuscular twilight where things almost seem lit from within. All right, now we're cooking with gas. This beautiful violet. Oh, so luscious. So painting, all about mark making and what you choose to keep. Hopefully that gives you a little a sense of, you know, how things are starting, where they're going. Um, I'm feeling, feeling pretty good about that. Whoop. All right. And now...
Here's one I prepared earlier. So, thanks for listening. Bye for now.